Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have the recursive definition of uh, chairing my own session this morning, so uh, I will set my stopwatch for, for 20 minutes. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending this session. Uh, I'm going to talk on behalf of the Irish OSGO community and uh, the committee on our experiences of building a, an OSGO community in Ireland over the last few years. So in the previous session, uh, the team from... Oceania and uh, Yakim then from Central Europe talked along, along these teams. So the presentation will look at our experiences of, of building a local chapter in Ireland over the last couple of years, some of our lessons learned, and maybe in this session, but certainly afterwards, to learn some new ideas from more longer and established chapters on how we can move forward a little bit uh, with our chapter uh, onto the next phase of, of developing the community. So uh, our experience as a local chapter is, uh, is born out of our, our local chapter mission statement, which is not too different to, to that of all of the other local chapters around the world. We look to create a network community of OSG, phosphor G users in Ireland, but also of developers, practitioners, teachers, and advocates. And there's a shared understanding of this community participation in the country. And I suppose the, the bottom one is, is important for me because it allows OSG Ireland to be a, a platform and a network for the users in the country. So, and we use users in the broadest sense that we, we, we try to say that if, if you have any involvement with open source software for geomatics, you are a member of our community, be you a top end developer or just an occasional user. So on the OSG website, it, brings this nicely to a, to a point to say that every chapter is different. So every chapter will have its own local uh, variations. It will be a mix of professionals, academics, etc., service providers, and individuals who are there to share their stories and experiences. So in 2014, 2015, this was the landscape of OSGO in Ireland. It was pretty barren looking. It, uh, it, uh, it, it was not really very well defined. There was evidence of uh, habitation, but it didn't really fit uh, our idea of a joined up community. The statistics was telling us that software and machinery and services was a huge expenditure in the Irish national budget every year. So people were buying software. So we assumed if people were buying software, they must also be using open source alternatives. And we were thinking then in 2014 and 2015, uh, where are all of the phosphor G people in Ireland mi hiding? Uh, have they found a new hiding place where we uh, can't see them at the moment? Or maybe they're just thinking of using phosphor G in Ireland and just haven't uh, emerged out to where we can see them. So the ingredients were all around. We had four major components into thinking about making a community. We had top-class universities who had huge spatial components in teaching and research. We had Dublin as a major global technical technology hub. Geography is actually a very core part of the Irish education system and curriculum. And then government, both at local and national level, are deeply involved in, in spatial planning uh, and, and various processes. So the ingredients were there. We also knew that there was an unofficial most popular list for technologies being used in the country. We had, uh, including our, um, my own work, using all of these with grass was very popular uh, amongst the forestry and the land use community. So they were the big players, but obviously there was, there was other uses of uh, many other technologies uh, in different places. But there was no coordination or a focal point for the community in Ireland at that time. So there was many ge geocomputation, GIS meetings and conferences, but very little exposure of phos Phosphor G. And where there was those conferences, it was mostly proprietary software dominated. And we had the weird situation that if you were a, an Irish user of OSGO or Phosphor G, the most likely place that you would find another Irish-based Phosphor G user was somewhere international at a Phosphor G conference. You would rarely ever meet them at a meeting uh, in your own country or locality. So 
that made us think, why not try to establish a, a local chapter as a focal point in Ireland and see if this could help coordinate all of the work that we knew was going on. We didn't maybe have the evidence, but we certainly knew from our own experiences was happening. So where to start? We had that cold start problem of uh, there was no existing chapter, there was no existing group, so we had to uh, gather together some ideas on where to start. So there was four or five of us that uh, got together and we identified people simply by our own connections, uh, by internet searches, etc., in people who could potentially be interested in being involved in a local chapter. We took the steps of setting up an Ireland page on the OSGO wiki. We set up a, a mailing list on the OSGO mailing system. And then we looked for encouragement from o the OSGO community. And I think this is what told us this was a good idea because we immediately were encouraged from the moment we said, would this be a good idea to set up a community, uh, a local community? And the answer was, without any hesitation, yes. So that said about saying, okay, if we've decided to organize, then we need to actually organize some type of flagship event. And this is where the work started. It was a giant step for us, I suppose, in organizing the first event. It would be a focal point for the, the community. It would provide a showcase. That this has always been in the committee's mind that it's a showcase for the community of different sectors and different areas. It's for information exchange, and then it should be a welcoming, open, and inclusive environment. So we, we want to make this conference as easy to, to attend as possible for, for everyone. So looking back and a little bit forward, we've had three national events so far, and we're tentatively planning, and I'm kind of offering to host the next event at my, my own university. We started off in, in May 2017 with our, our first symposium. Uh, probably the most nerve-wracking event I've ever organized because we had really no idea whether we would get six people, that was the committee, or we'd get 26 or multiples of. So we're very happy to have around 60 participants. The following year, our numbers rose. And then, I'm not sure, we made a decision to change venue and change date, and we, we lost some people. Uh, again, this is something that we're going to uh, discuss over, over the next few months to see how we can uh, reverse that trend. But we're hoping next year in uh, April or May to organize the fourth event, uh, possibly in a university-based setting. So 2017, just some pictures uh, to show that the event did actually happen. Uh, 2018, and uh, that's a, quite a famous face who's sitting on the front, front row of the audience this morning. And 2019, Martin, <coughs> Martin Hook. So the structure we've taken, uh, given, given the, I suppose, our geographical size and the potential number of participants, we went for a, a, a pretty streamlined single day structure with, with an opening address uh, and a welcome, then some in, invited keynote presentation with Q&A, uh, a break with Encourage Networking, uh, our lightning talk session against lunch in an informal environment with networking. And then a core part is our workshops, which are up to about two and a half hours of workshop. And then we have a close, closing session where, where we invite the audience to uh, give us some feedback right there and then, and also to uh, offer some suggestions for next year. So workshops, I think if you've attended the workshops this week, you'll realize that they're a core part of the ecosystem of, of, the, of OSGO, but also of, of our symposium. We aim them at uh, entry level or beginner. Uh, be, so we, we, we try to aim at two levels, I suppose. Entry level, so that's brand new to a piece of software or a service, or maybe intermediate level. So we did uh, some geospatial Python this year, which was would assume some Python knowledge. So it's not just uh, uh, entry level. All of our workshops are bring your own device, but we suggest that the workshops would use software that is on the OSGO Live distribution. There is a celebration there. The reason being is that we, we, uh, we give all of the delegates a USB, a bootable USB key with OSGO Live on. So we know that if they come with 
any type of laptop, we can be reasonably certain of them able to run the software for the workshop. So it, the only headache in the OSGO Live is us writing all the USB keys beforehand. So uh, otherwise, it's, uh, it's a really nice, uh, it's a really wonderful distribution. The workshop materials are always delivered uh, on the web post-symposium. The lightning talks actually have been the, the most popular part of the symposium. So we've had 40 so far, and uh, in the first year, uh, a delegate who was a proprietary GIS person for years stood up and said, lightning talks are the best part of any conference I've been to in the last 10 years. So uh, we uh, have a strict seven minute uh, time limit. We strictly moderate it. It's very audience friendly because uh, you can see that there is less use of uh, WhatsApp and Facebook on mobile devices. People are really engaged and it really delivers a tapestry of what's happening in OSGEO uh, and Phosphor G in, in Ireland at, at that point in time. So working with other communities uh, and the Oceania guys really have uh, perfected this at the moment in working with other communities. We are quite closely connected to OSG, OSM Ireland. Uh, we hosted their, their first large event uh, in October 2018 where, the, where they became a, an official company uh, chapter. Uh, so, you know, we would look in future to, to hosting, co-hosting events with the OpenStreetMap people. Uh, so, for example, there happens to be a mapping party tomorrow morning that I won't make because... Uh, I have a very late flight tonight, uh, but we also support other events which are OSGO focused, which are happening maybe in, uh, in universities or research centers around the country. So do we have any advice for people who may not have a local chapter yet, but are thinking about setting up one? Uh, so remember our geographical scope, We've, it's a small country. There's a huge employment uh, sector in IT and uh, ICT, so we, we certainly bring that type of potential energy to the, to the uh, conversation. The first piece of advice is you'll need a strong committee to work together because uh, every event that you organize is the iceberg model. That's uh, maybe not an official management model, but eight-ninths of it is under the water that people never see, working with catering, working with the Wi-Fi in the hotel, etc. And the one ninth is that's what people see on the morning of the event. So you need a strong committee that are happy to delegate tasks, are comfortable with delegating tasks to other people in the, the group, and that will take responsibility. So that, that's a, a key part of the, the committee's uh, role. And Daniel, from uh, I, I got this on the web. I'm, that's the, the URL that I found it at. But I think this is perfectly summarized. If I, if I could send away a message, it was that the planning is, is always conducted in the spirit of open source communities. Enthusiastic volunteers. Now, we might be, get tired, but we certainly are enthusiastic. There's always open planning, and we, we try to be collaborative and transparent. So we mostly have teleconference meetings because of the, the geographical uh, dispersion of us all, but we try to make minutes available and make the decisions in a collaborative uh, manner. Second is, we've actually found getting sponsorship quite difficult. Uh, there's a very de de delicate balance, we feel, between the ticket pricing at the event, the actual hire of the facilities, and then other expenses. So we've, we've, from, from the first day, we've uh, organized our event as a cost recovery model. So we're not looking to make a profit, but in Ireland, for some reason, companies, government agents, etc., don't really understand yet how to sponsor our event. So that's something that we might need to get some expertise into the committee about because we know there's plenty of money there for sponsorship. It's just understanding how to turn that tap on. And that means then we could have maybe bigger events, maybe two-day events, etc., where we can uh, expand what we can offer. Uh, the third thing is uh, get a bank account. Uh, it makes things a lot simpler uh, for dealing with sponsorship, the small sponsorship we get. Uh, I know banking regulation will differ between countries and regions, but we're set up a little bit 
similar to a university club or society. So uh, if you are the archery club in a university, you probably have the same financial structure as OSG or Ireland. It, it means we have a bank card, check, checkbook, account, etc. And uh, we need a couple of signatures to uh, do anything serious. And then we need some volunteers to do the accounts at the end of the year. And the number four is what we didn't do in the first year, we were so busy, is get on Twitter and get on as quickly as possible because uh, it's a vital source of uh, communication. Very easy to c create connections. And don't forget that you'll need some people to be the Twitter people because uh, it does require keeping a, a watch on, on Twitter quite frequently, particularly when uh, related events uh, are on in the community. And number five is some nuts are harder to crack than others. Uh, we found that government agencies, local authorities, SMEs and consultants are the most prominent members of our community, uh, without any question. The academic community, of which I'm a member of, have been far more difficult to engage. So they are the cat that's hiding under the sofa uh, at the beginning. Uh, we've had academic representation, of course. So we're working hard to see how we can engage better with the academic community because I know there's a lot of OSGO and Phosphor-G work going on within the academic community in Ireland. It's just a matter of figuring out how we need to engage with that particular community. So has it been worth it? And uh, the answer is without any question, yes. Because for, for us looking back, and, and Seth, uh, one of the organizers with me, is in the audience for, for this type of connection. So we have Marcus here, who, if you don't know, is the godfather of grass, possibly. And for, to have somebody that has developed the software sit down with you in a workshop and talk about that software, that is a, an, an incredible connection. So the creator of the software is talking to you about using that software. Uh, that type of connection is, uh, is worth far more uh, than we can imagine. The same with Martin last year for GC2, or this year, sorry, GC2 and Vidi. He gave the keynote and then gave the workshop. He stayed after, he had his laptop out. That type of connection where the source of the software, the actual source of the software is there and is open for, for questions and for help. And we, we had a great quote, quote last uh, April. One of the local government QGIS champions was... Uh, he champions uh, the use of QGIS within his government agency, but it's obviously a proprietary house. But he has managed to get people using QGIS in-house for their work by telling them that it's actually got an enterprise-wide usage license. So the moment people hear that it's enterprise-wide, they have no problem using it. So uh, it might be just a way of changing the words you use and suddenly... Uh, uh, a local government agency is using QGIS rather than some of the competing GIS. Our plans for the future uh, include uh, possibly organizing Phosphor G Europe, where X is greater than zero. We're not ready to do uh, next year just yet, but uh, we certainly have the, the, the possibility and the potential to, to host something on, uh, on that scale. So just wrapping up with about two minutes to go, our t top tips on starting out is to uh, be brave because uh, I've been involved in workshop organization and conference organization a lot, but it was always in an established area where there was a set of conferences beforehand. Uh, it, it felt like a brave thing to do, starting with level zero, where there was nothing to back on and we were organizing the very first event. <coughs> Great volunteers goes without saying that... Uh, we're very lucky that we've had a group, and the, the group has been transient. There's people that's moved in of the group and moved out as their, their own employment or family situation has changed. And starting off, you actually need to do the reaching out, because if, if you haven't been there before, the community will not know about you. So you need to do a lot of reaching out, sending emails, going to events, talking to people, networking a little bit. And then to be proud of the event you organize, but be proud of OSGO and the Phosphor-G software that is behind there. And aim to get better and work harder for that whole community. So every year we, we set the benchmark of trying to do better in the following year to attract new people to, to do different things at the, at the workshop event. So 
exactly on time, we have five minutes for questions, which I'll moderate. Thank you very much. So I have been already following your community and I love the way you have been growing and evolving. I think it's very healthy and sustainable. Have you thought of writing a how to create a community article or maybe on the wiki of OSGEO or a blog post or something so other communities can follow those steps? So that's a great question. Marie, Marie actually gave a, a, a tele keynote for us uh, two years ago. It actually when when I started uh, thinking about this talk, that was something that I thought about doing and should put some more serious thought into because when I was searching for other people who had done similar things, there, there was no real how-to guide. And I think between ourselves and I know the Oceanic guys are a little bit different in geographical scale, but I think we've all touched the same type of issues. And uh, that's certainly maybe something we could even do some kind of remote collaboration on, I think. We were thinking uh, with John about getting together tomorrow at the Go Sprint and do a little bit of regional Phos4G psychological support group or something and start thinking about a wiki or a how-to or, or something. Maybe we can get together and start thinking about it and everyone is invited. Okay, so it's a, an invitation to the Code Sprint tomorrow for a, an informal grouping. I, th I think that would be very valuable because uh, it, it surprised me a little to see that y you would think that there's a local chapter in every country, in every region, and that's not the case, and that, that's a little bit surprising. So it, it probably is, has onus on us then to pass on the, the lessons that we're learning as we learn ourselves uh, onto the community. So uh, I think that would be a great idea, uh, and certainly despite geographical distance, the the issues are the same, almost. Yeah, yeah. Marco. Thanks, Peter, for your talk and also for putting my face. <laughs> Seems like one life ago, but it's only one year ago. <laughs> so um, sharing the Italian experience, you know, in Italy we have a very well-established event, and it's always held at a university. So this is a, really a suggestion, as you already mentioned, to really get in touch with other universities because once there are academic collaborations already ongoing, you know, it's easy to organize it at university because there's a venue, there are workshops, rooms, uh, and at least you know that the academic people will, will, will be there. So we'll know about the event and it will be easy. Then I have a comment and another question. I know probably last week I saw on the OSM mailing list that uh, there, there's also an application uh, to become an OSM Foundation local chapter. I don't know if you are behind this, but if yes, uh, can you share maybe any experience on the difference or the reaction from the OSM community and the OSGEO community during the two application phases? I think the other application is still ongoing. Thanks, Marco. Yes, yeah, so OSM Ireland are uh, applying to, to the, in the chapter process in, in OSM. Uh, we, we personally know a lot of the, the people involved there and we, I think OSM Ireland are looking at us as being a guide to their next steps. So the process for them is a little bit different within the OpenStreetMap community. But <clears throat> from, from informal conversations we've had, we've been talking about you know, trying to have our events where we, we co-locate or we have some, some type of inter interactive event where we could bring people who didn't realize they were part of the Phosphor G community from OSM and vice versa together onto, onto the same day. Just going back to the university question, that's exactly the, one of the big reasons why we're, we're thinking of moving to the university setting is simply because of the, the costing. The, the cost of, of, of event hire outside of a university setting is one of the things that keeps us awake at night when we're organizing these things because we have this huge chunk of money to uh, somehow uh, raise where if we can hold that at the university, we can, you know, look to apply to the university for almost zero cost uh, hosting, which would then allow us to do a lot more with, with our event. So, uh, so thanks for both, both those, Marco. I think finally... 
Sorry, just it's not a question. It's just a comment. I'm I have two ads actually. Uh, I'm part of the Oyster Life project you mentioned before, and I'm also a workshop organizer in the French conference and Europe in France in 2017. And when you say must you, your software must use Oyster Life whenever it's possible. Sometimes it's not possible. When when you can do that, please do that. Uh, uh, I used to um, organize conferences and workshops where we provide computers, so it's so much easier to deploy OS your life and say, okay, we have virtual machines and we deployed that. So if you can uh, use OS your life whenever you can, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. We're right on 25 minutes, so thank you for the questions and feedback. So we have time to switch our rooms now. Thank you.